Tulum, Mexico was amazing. Definitely one of the top three places that I've visited. A lot of people keep asking me like, what was there to do, where we stayed? So here it is, all of the details. When we flew to Tulum, we actually flew Spirit. My boyfriend actually booked us an all-inclusive package for about $700, which included both our round-trip tickets along with our hotel stay that was all-inclusive. And man, was it amazing. But we'll get to that. Uh, we flew Spirit there, which gave us a layover in Florida. And then we flew JetBlue back, which also gave us a layover in Florida. Now, when packing... Make sure that you bring your passport because yes, Mexico, you have to have a passport. Now, if you're a last minute person like me, we're always running last minute. So I have, me personally, I have clear check-in and my boyfriend actually has TSA pre-check. Now, we were testing the waters out and of course, TSA pre-check allows you to just go straight through. You don't have to take off your shoes or anything, but clear lets you jump the line. That is the difference between clear and pre-check. But what I have learned is that clear also offers a clear pre-check. So now I'm gonna make sure that I sign up for that. So not only will I be able to jump the line, but I also won't have to take off my shoes or anything when checking in. Another thing that you wanna do before entering into Mexico is make sure that you exchange your American dollars for pesos while you're in the US. Basically, it's easier for you to exchange your money here and collect more of your money here and save on taxes instead of exchanging it when you get to Mexico. So my boyfriend actually booked us a private ride with Endless Tours. This is a special travel agency. One, it was so special because no one else is in the band with you, but whoever you came with. It cost us, I think, about $100 each way but no one else is in the van with us. They do have the option to where you can allow other people in the van with you and it would be a little bit cheaper, but it's not worth the private ride. Um, the name of the person who picked us up was called Endless Tours. So we actually stayed at a beautiful resort. It was so perfect. And when I tell you that it was all inclusive, I mean food, all you can eat, food, all, breakfast, lunch, dinner, all you can eat, drinks, alcohol. We kept taking shots after shots after shots. The bar was open from seven in the morning until 11 p.m. You can do room service and it's still free. They had desserts every single night. They had a different dinner. We had Chinese night, we had lamb chops, we had duck, and it was all free, all included in the package that we purchased. The name of the hotel that we stayed at is called the Core Tulum Resort and Spa. And it was amazing. The customer service was beautiful. Every single day, I would call and ask to have the room cleaned and for us to have brand new towels and everything every single night. And they provided it and the service was so perfect. Usually you have to wait a long time for food. Everything was A1. They accommodated us with anything that we needed. So the only thing that I would say is, of course, when you're traveling to another country, your phone service changes. I know you don't get a lot of reception, except for usually when you're on the resort. The only thing about this resort is that Wi-Fi service is not provided with the room, but you can and you will have to pay about $18 a day for Wi-Fi. But it was worth it, $18 a day. They also have a one, three, or a five day package, which makes it a little bit cheaper for Wi-Fi service, but who doesn't need Wi-Fi? Resort also has an on-site gym, which we took advantage of, two bars, jacuzzis, pool, everything is magical. They even have the beds on the beach. The water is beautiful. We got to watch the sunrise. It was just beautiful. So if I was you, I would definitely book that hotel. The hotel was actually central to everything. It sits right in the middle. If you would come out of the hotel and go to the right, you'll be going towards where the locals are. But if you come out and you go to the left, it's more of where the tourists are. But the hotel
hotel was perfect. I would definitely book it again. Now, when traveling in Mexico, we actually built a relationship with one specific taxi driver whose name was Santiago. And I feel like when you pick one taxi driver and build a relationship with them, you don't have to worry about trying to negotiate prices or going places. Um, building a relationship with Santiago was we were able to contact him anytime we were ready to go anywhere anytime we wanted to be picked up and he did it for a reasonable price anytime that Santiago wasn't available and we had to talk to another cab driver their prices were very outrageous like to the extreme so I would suggest finding someone who you can build a relationship with while you're in Tulum or if you want reach out to Santiago I'll put his information below so of course our first day there we actually ended up bike riding now at first bike riding was it seemed to be beautiful but it can be a bit of a workout honestly our hotel actually provided free bikes as long as you return the bikes before 6 p.m and we were able to ride the bikes anywhere that we wanted to go again when you come out of the hotel because it's so central you go to the right or the left you can go to either beach side um, but the bikes were very nice. It was nice. It was an exercise again, but it was worth it. Another th good thing about the taxis is during our trip to Tulum, I actually lost my cell phone in the taxi. But the best thing about this is that in Tulum, they had a taxi group chat that if you lose something in your taxi or anything, you can easily have the person at the front desk reach out to the taxi group chat so that you can find your item because other than that we had no other way to find my phone so thank god that we were able to use that and get my phone back so our second day in Tulum, we actually were able to visit a cenote our first cenote it was so beautiful um it wasn't far from the hotel that we were staying at it was the main um cenote that all of the hotel residents were referring us to and I didn't get in the water of course but it was beautiful the water was pure they make sure that you wash your body off before you can actually go down into into the cenote I go back and do it again. we going down down the cenote. into the cenote i ain't getting in the water they look like they being baptized down there come on bro she gonna ask me if i need to like that i am the fish it shit in my it shit in my jeans. My ancestors been doing this. Deep sea diving. Um, yes, the cenotes have bats, but they don't bother you. Um, the water is deep on some sides, but it's also shallow on the other side. You are swimming with the turtles, the local people. It was just so it was beautiful and it was definitely an experience. On the third day, we were able to take a boat ride. Now, this was some, this was very fancy, and I'm not really a fancy person, but the boat ride actually took us two hours to reach our destination. When we got over there, we were so tired and drained. By the time we got there, we did get to get inside the water. They did give us um, snacks and drinks while we were on the boat ride. Uh, by the time we got to the other side, we got out, we got into the water enjoyed it a little bit and then we had to drive a full two hours back, back to our location now would i do that again no but it was an experience later that night we were able to go to dinner at taboo now taboo is a well-known restaurant here in tulum they offer many 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 entrees that lobster is just amazing food it is very very expensive um I don't think I would visit the place anymore. It's just an experience that a lot of people on social media visit and of course we had to try it out. But taboo, it, the food was good. I must say, the food was good. All right, day four, we took full advantage of seeing exactly what we wanted to see. We first started off at everyone's favorite cenote that everyone likes and the cenote is listed below and it was so magical. We were able to rent out the cenote privately. Now the way that we did that is because when we arrived early thinking that no one else would be there we could get in earlier when we arrived there was already someone who was renting the cenote out um, privately so we asked the people how would we be able to rent it out privately well 
good thing that we asked because not only was it only $200 to rent out the whole cave privately, but we got to kick everyone else out who was already in there. <laughs> now, for $200, you get to rent out the snow tank, meaning that you get one hour of just you and whoever you came with in the cenote alone with one lifeguard. Was it worth it? Yes, because we got to take as many pictures as we wanted. We got to like swim, well I wasn't swimming, but everyone else got to swim inside the um, cenote by themselves. If we were drowning, of course they were gonna say, but uh, only us. <laughs> it was just well worth it. Now down in the cenote, um, there were catfish that we were swimming with, but they don't bother you. And because it had rained before, I know on some pictures that you see on social media, you'll see where people are standing on the rocks and there's no water around. But when we went, there was actually water that came up to about hip level for me and I'm 5'2", but it's not always like that. But it was so well worth it. The water was very cold, but it was so beautiful. That was probably one of my favorite moments of traveling to Tulum. Now, after our cenote, we were driving back to the hotel and we decided to stop on the side of the road and drink some fresh coconuts. And all the guy did was chop the coconut open and we, we were able to drink coconut water and take tequila shots. And it was very, very inexpensive. They had convenience stores. And what I learned is when you come out of, the ho out of our hotel and go to the right to where most of the locals are, everything is way cheaper, way less expensive. But when you come out of the hotel and go to the left where most of the tourists are, it can be very pricey. Where to the right of us, we would pay $2 for a coconut. If we were to come out and go to the left to the tourist side, we would pay about $10. So of course, we tried to spend most of our time on the right of the hotel and it was well worth it. I say when going to Tulum, you have to visit the local area so that you can really feel the culture of any country that you travel. Now, everyone's favorite place that they thought that we visited was the Tulum Jungle Gym. Now this gym is definitely outside and it sits on the beach. And when I tell you it is so amazing, like I've never seen anything like this before. It really reminded me of the Flintstones back in the day. All of their weights are built out of wood. They have like, um, this basket that of course I was sitting in and your partner can pull you up and it's actually a workout and then you hear the water it's like an experience that everyone should experience um the week that we went was actually the second week that it was actually open and to enter into it you do have to pay $25 each person to get into the gym but it was so worth it it was it was worth it you can wear it. people were out there with no shoes on working out in their bathing suits in the sand they're staying there it's just an experience that you have to see if you go to Tulum have to okay day five we actually decided to make this a relaxing day because we knew that the next day we were going to be leaving so we started off our day with waking up and watching the sunrise and the sun rises in Tulum at about 6 20 6 30 in the morning and when I tell you where our hotel is located of course we can walk right out to the water and watch the sunrise and sit on the rocks and it was beautiful to watch the sunset over sunrise over the water it just made it even more magical and beautiful after we did that we got dressed we actually went for breakfast on the hotel because again the hotel provides breakfast lunch and dinner and snacks for free and free drinks I had planned to go to the Mayan Mayan ruins but it was actually closed so we decided to go to another one but it was well worth it now because of COVID I'm assuming that they still had things roped off and not everything was completely open but the one that we decided to go to was about 45 minutes from our hotel and then we got to stay there we got to you know get a little bit of history of how everything was built and it was an experience as well. Even though it wasn't the exact one that we wanted to go to, it was worth it. Another to-do thing in Tulum is definitely the Matcha Mama. When I tell you they offer all of your healthy, just everything, healthy shots, ginger shots, and I can, you can just tell that it opens you up. It's very natural and healthy. It's called the Matcha Mama. All of their drinks and everything are very good. Um, everyone who was in there kept referring it to us like it was another place that you have to visit 
Now the last thing that we decided to do while in Tulum was have a beach massage. This was the way to close out our vacation. The beach massage we actually only paid 25 US dollars for one hour full body massage. And it felt even better. I don't know if it was because the water was there and we were sitting on the beach and getting a massage, but it felt even better than getting a massage here in the United States. They did everything from your feet, head, hair, back. I know they were standing over my boyfriend's back. They were just touching every single part of your body that you could imagine. Not every single part, but it was just amazing. It was so peaceful and just beautiful. Now, the massage place is actually located on the beach close to where the Tulum Jungle Gym is. If you're standing in front of the Tulum Jungle Gym and you're facing the Jungle Gym and you go to your left, they have a bunch of um, massage places that will offer beach massages. But we got lucky because we like to negotiate and we actually chose one that was $25 per person. Now, if you all are looking for nightlife, um, Tulum really doesn't have a nightlife. Uh, their places and restaurants and everything kind of closed down a little early, about 12 o'clock, but they do have one place that actually was open. It's located directly across from the Taboo restaurant. It's actually a little diagonal to the Taboo restaurant and they're open, it's like a hookah lounge. And they play like R&B music, they play like uh, hip hop, they play um, Spanish music, they play all sorts of music. It's always packed in there. You can smoke hookahs, you can drink, and they're open till about three in the morning. That's probably the only nightlife that we were able to see. planning your trip to Tulum. If you guys have any questions, be sure to comment below and I'll be sure to answer.